Hello friends, Namaskar. Have you received section 148A notice? A very very prevalent topic in the current day time because nowadays you can find that income tax department is issuing notices under section 148A to various assessees for various reasons. So what is this section 148A notice? How it has to be handled? There are certain practical inputs which I want to provide through this particular video, through this particular session to the assessees at large. So my dear friends, what will be the coverage of this video? Just in a nutshell, I am putting up before you. What is the purpose of new regime? Why I called it new regime? It is not so that previously income escaped the suspend kind of assessment were not happening. They were already happening under section 147. There was a procedure for the same. But this 148A section is a new insertion and which has changed the system of section 147 assessment in a drastic manner. So what is this new regime? I call it a new regime. This I will try to bring before you. During this new regime, what are the various powers of the assessing officer? How such powers are used by the assessing officer? What if the assessee responds? So whether the assessee should respond or not and what will happen if the assessee responds? How the final decision shall be taken by the AO? This is a cognizance which we have to take that the final decision, what will be the process of the same by the AO? What are the consequences of section 148A order? Mind you, my dear friends, in this procedure, there is an order which is to be passed by the AO. So what is the consequence of such kind of order with the AO will pass? Whether section 148A order is appealable? Would you like to, I hope you would like to learn this, that okay, if we want to file an appeal against this kind of order, whether it is possible, when section 148A procedure will not be applicable, so whether there are any exception to this procedure and what is the time limit of issuing notice under section 148A. These all aspects will cover through this particular session. So the first and foremost part which I would like to discuss is what is the purpose of new regime. My dear friends, I call it a new regime because previously also this regime was prevailing. But what was happening in the previous regime, the department has concealed the information from the SSE. It used to not to provide it to the SSE and just keep a mum asking the SSE under section 148 straight away to file the return of income of certain income which in the opinion of the department, the department has reason to believe that such income has escaped assessment. Now how would department which only department knows an assessee would be able to provide on his own. Maybe he is able to remember, maybe he is not able to remember the information regarding income which in the opinion of the department has not been reported in the ITR of the assessee. With this new regime, the department has come upfront sharing that information with the assessee that okay look Mr. Bhatia you have deposited so much so cash in your account. Mr. Bhatia, you have done certain real estate transaction on which you have not reported any capital gain tax liability. You have purchased certain property, probably you don't have sufficient funds for such kind of investment. So we want to know, okay, what are the sources of such fund? You have sold certain shares or securities on which probably you have not paid tax liability. Earlier department did not provide such information to the SSE before SSE filed a return under section 148. But under the new regime, the department is aiming to standardize the procedure of reopening of assessment under section 147. Department wants to strengthen it further. That is the government want to strengthen the procedure of 147. And the government also wants to reduce the litigation procedure which it is facing presently because of the various reasons. Now, to put up my particular point in a better way, I am trying to put up it in form of the title of section 148a so that you can understand the procedure which I'll explain further. That the title my dear friends of section 148a is conducting enquiry providing opportunity before issue of notice under section 148. So as I said that it is not so that previously there was no procedure previously before completing a 147 assessment. Now what is 147 assessment? It is an assessment to open up the old cases where department wants to know that whether any tax liability has been escaped in a regular course. So to make up an assessment under section 147, department was issuing notices under section 148. Now before 148A, one additional procedure of 148A is brought into picture 
and this 148A has to be crossed before issuing a 148 notice. And then once this 148 notice is there, then 147 procedure will complete. So this is a stepping up at the departmental side before reaching out to the SSE for 147 assessment and this will certainly be benefiting to the SSE in my opinion that I will, uh, that I will prove in the further discussions. Now I come to the poor part of my discussion of section 148A. Mind you my dear friends I am continuously saying that 148A is the new regime which is to be followed before following the previous procedure of section 148. Now let me read section 148A because I believe in directly referring to the Bayer Act so that whatever I am telling you, you can have a confidence in my words that yes, Mr. Bhatia is putting up all these points by way of law. So since I am putting up by way of law, your confidence in this video will enhance further. The assessing officer shall, so it is mandatory, the assessing officer shall before issuing any notice under section 148, what he will do? He will conduct any inquiry. Whatever inquiry he wants, he can conduct. But before conducting, if required with the prior approval of a specified authority. Now, who is the specified authority? It may be CIT, CCIT level authority. So, the AO, wherever he wants to take up your assessment under section 147 and to do so, he has to issue your notice under section 148. He has to follow the procedure of 148A. In 148A, he is supposed to conduct the inquiry with the prior approval of specified authority and he is supposed to do so mandatorily. With respect to the information which suggests that the income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment. Now the question which will come up in your mind is, okay, what kind of information Mr. Bhatia would suggest that the income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment? That I am supposed to explain you further. Now I come to that question's answer that, okay, what kind of information may suggest that the income has escaped assessment? The answer to this question, my dear friend, is not given in section 148A, it is given under section 148. Now, in section 148, there is an explanation one which says that the information with the AO, uh, which suggests to the AO that the income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment means any information flagged in the case of assessee for the relevant assessment year in accordance with risk management strategy formulated by board from time to time. Mind you, my dear friends, the CBDT from time to time draws certain criteria of opening up of the assessment or flagging certain marking for the EO's uh, prudence, for the EO's information base that, okay, if this is the information which is available on the domain, then probably there is some income escaped assessment involved. Say for an example, as I said earlier, even depositing cash of rupees 10 lakh or more in a bank account, certain security transaction with certain value not reported in the ITR, certain real estate purchase, real estate sale, etc. So the, there is certain flagging which is done by CBDT. Further, any final objection which is raised by the controller in Auditor General of India to the effect that assessment in the case of assessee for the relevant assessment year has not been done in accordance with the provision of this act. See, what is the meaning of this? That whatever assessments are done by the department, those assessments are looked into by the controller and auditor general of India. That is the office of controller and auditor general of India conducts audit of these assessments. So where an assessment is already done and there is a CAG audit and in CAG audit, there is an objection by the CAG office that certain deduction have been wrongly allowed, certain exemptions have been wrongly claimed and allowed certain income computation have been done on a lower side. Based on these objections, the department get, the EO gets a suggestion that the income might have escaped assessment and let there be a further assessment under section 147. So assuming that the EO has conducted an inquiry based on certain information which are in their possession, the question comes how to use such power, what the EO will do? With this particular section in place 148A, the AO shall provide an opportunity of being heard to the assessee. Now, what is the purpose of 148A? Is to provide an opportunity which was previously absent in the old regime. In the new regime, this is the beautiful thing. This is the new thing which is coming up that AO shall provide an opportunity of being heard to the assessee again with the prior approval of a specified authority. 
by serving upon him a notice to show cause within such time as may be specified in the notice being not less than 7 days and not exceeding 30 days from the date on which such notice is issued or such time as may be extended by him on the basis of application in this bill as to why a notice under section 148 should not be issued on the basis of information so very important point my dear friend that through this particular section 148a eo is supposed to mandatorily issue a show cause notice to the assessee asking him why not based on the information which is available in their domain an assessment should be opened under section 148 in previous regime there was no sharing of information at all in the new regime my dear friend there is a sharing of information by the department to the assessee telling him that look we have in our possession this and this information do you want to say anything about this now you have to make up your mind that okay let me be ready with my answer on this particular notice so a fantastic opportunity in my opinion how it is fantastic i'll prove in my further discussion also fantastic opportunity in my opinion on the assessee's part that the department is duty bound to give you an opportunity of being heard before opening up of assessment and before issuing a notice under section 148 that is calling you to file a return of income mind you under 148a notice department is not asking you to file the itr it is simply asking you that okay based on the information do you think that we should issue a notice under section 148 opening up assessment under section 147 Now the next question, my dear friend, is what if the assessee responds? Suppose you have gone ahead, you have done, you are working, and now you are responding. Then the law says the AO shall. What the AO will do? AO shall consider. It is not that AO shall not consider. AO shall consider the reply of the assessee furnished, if any, in response to the show cause notice referred to in clause B. So it is not that AO can simply straight away deny your submission. He has to consider the reply which you are filing. so the opportunity of being heard is there which is a concept of natural justice through which you are being asked to produce your reply the information which you will be submitting the reply which you will be submitting will be certainly and certainly considered by the eo a very important message under this new section of section 148a now let's say there is an enquiry there is a show cause notice there is a response filed by the assessee so now what to be done by the eo he has to take a final decision final decision to be taken by the eo eo shall decide on the basis of material available on record including reply of the assessee whether or not it is a fit case to issue a notice under section 148 by passing an order very important thing sir the eo shall pass an order under section 148a and in that order he will mention whether your case is a fit case for issuance of notice under section 148 or not suppose if you makes up his mind that okay no your tax liability is duly paid so no 148 notice will come up and suppose he is not satisfied with your answer or you did not reply at all now you sh- should not be in such a situation that you are not replying i keep on suggesting you should reply it's a golden opportunity so if suppose you reply and the you understood that okay your tax liability is duly paid then you will drop it what you will drop you will drop your 147 you will not open it all but suppose if you don't respond or your response is not sufficient in his opinion then with the prior approval of the specified authority within one month from the end of the month in with the reply referred to in clause c is received by him or where no reply is furnished within one month from the end of the month in with the time or extended time allowed to furnish a response under clause b expire what will he do he will open up the assessment under section 147 and how will that assessment be opened up a notice under section 148 shall be finally issued so we should try our level best that a 148a order is passed in our favor under with the proceeding of 148 that is 147 is not at all initiated against the assessee that is why i am calling it a golden opportunity of getting your case dropped within 148a procedure itself so my dear friends based on the previous discussion which i just had what are the consequences of section 148a order there are two consequences either the proposed assessment shall be dropped against the assessee or an assessment under section 147 shall be opened by way of issuing notice under section 148 calling for return of income it is not necessary that even after you filed 
a reply the 148a order will be always dropping off the proceeding no if the department is not satisfied with your reply then department may open up the assessment against you so they may drop or they may not drop so both side the ball may move now a very very interesting question which i am putting up before you you must be interested in knowing the answer to this question whether decision of ao is appealable the answer to this question that whether the decision of ao is appealable decision is what suppose he drops then naturally no objection but if it doesn't drop even after you replied him then what will happen can you file an appeal sir section 246a of income tax act 1961 provides the list of appealable order in income tax law and unfortunately that does not contain a 148a order of not dropping the proceeding so if you are not satisfied with the eos order of not dropping your proceeding then the only remedy in my opinion available to you is to go to the high court with the writ petition with the help of your lawyer so that is where you can find a remedy otherwise law does not provide a separate specific appealable remedy in the income tax law in this regard one more important question when the procedure of section 148a shall not apply so department has certain exception under which 148a procedure shall not be applicable these are three circumstances one number one in your case there is a search initiated on or after 1st of april 2021 for the search second in the case of an assessee where the search is not conducted but a search is conducted on a third party and in that search the money bullion jewelry valuable article thing pertaining to you are found and seized during that search third where any information pertaining to you is found during the course of search conducted on some other person in these three cases the department is not bound to follow the procedure of section 148a it will straight away take up the procedure of section 148 notice issuance another very very important question time limit for issuance of notice under section 148a what is the time limit of issuing notice under 148a the answer to this question is not given in the law as such there is no time limit given but it is not that the 148a notice can be given up to any time answer to this question i am trying to derive from the provisions of section 149 which gives the time limit of issuance of notice under section 148 See, you all would agree with me that the purpose of Section 148A notice is to decide whether a 148 notice can be issued or not. So, if a 148 notice has become time barred, there is no sense of issuing a 148A notice. Now, what is the time limit of 148 notice? That is also revised. That revised time limit is no notice under Section 148 shall be issued for the relevant assessment year if three years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year, unless the case falls under Clause B. So, if up by the end of that assessment year 3 year have elapsed now there cannot be a notice unless case falls in clause b if 3 year but not more than 10 year have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year unless the eo has in his possession books of account other document or evidence which reveal that the income chargeable to tax represented in form of asset which has escaped assessment or is likely to amount to 50 lakh rupees or more for that year so if Three year have elapsed from the relevant assessment year. Department can issue a notice under Section 148 up to ten year from the end of relevant assessment year. But in that case, the minimum amount of income involved in the department's domain should be 50 lakh rupees or more. If it is less than that, then the assessment cannot be opened up at all. So what I wanted to put up before you that to issue a notice under Section 148A. the time limit of section 148 that is provided under section 149 is a yardstick if that time limit of 149 has expired then there is no sense of issuing a 148a notice now let me put up this thing by way of an example say for example the assessment year 1819 the department want to open up an assessment on 10th of april 2022 now by this date 3 year from the end of relevant assessment year have already expired on 31st of march 2022 let's say the amount involved is just 10 lakh rupees department can't open up the assessment because the 3 year have elapsed but suppose for this year the assessee sold a property of 60 lakh and he did not report that transaction in itr then prima facie reason available in the department domain is 50 lakh or more then prima facie assessment can be opened up this is one way to see or to learn this procedure of 148a and relevant time limit thereof 
a very useful very important i can say the crux of this whole video is here how should an assessee respond to section 148 a notice suppose you are a compliant person and you know that whole of my tax liability has been duly paid nothing to worry about you just simply reply satisfy to the authority my tax liability is paid nothing to worry about your case will be dropped suppose you are of the mind no i have escaped my tax liability and i am supposed to pay then whether while you are filing reply to section 148a if you want to pay that tax and interest you are secured from further procedure of section 147 answer is no but again i am of the mind sir that if you will file reply to a 148a notice and you will probably go there with payment of tax and interest higher are the chances that the penalty proceeding may not be initiated or if initiated then you may file appeal against such penalty proceeding and you may win over the case so why i am suggesting you to pay the tax along with interest if any payable in your knowledge because of that 148a notice you find that certainly certain income has escaped and tax is payable and you pay tax and interest today only before even a 148 notice is issued in my opinion higher are the chances that penalty may not be levied but i cannot guarantee for the same because the language of the law is not clear about it but this kind of suggestion may be generally helpful this is what my view is and this may be helpful to you in facing further proceedings of assessment under section 147 and to save you from the penalty and i can say that you should try for this I know my dear friend this has been quite a long video on the topic but this topic is a new topic in the market 148a notice are now prevailing and to save yourself with the help of these notices from the departmental harshness is a golden opportunity so i wish that yes you can face these proceedings with the help of this video this is the purpose of this video this is the purpose of this session wishing you all the best thank you very much for being with me jai